everybody. Welcome to Choice Classics. My name is Colleen, and we're going to spend this afternoon together listening to a variety of styles of classical music. We're going to start with a piece called Vancouver Rain. This is location-specific. In fact, Vancouver, Canada is my hometown, and this piece depicts all the things that happen when it rains. Little raindrops, children splashing in puddles on their way home from school. Yes, my mother loved that side of life. And I hope you enjoyed it. It's got wind in the trees and everything. It was first performed at the Sonic Boom Festival in Vancouver, Canada in 2006. It has since been performed a number of places and recorded by Ben Pino and Graham Thulis, among others, a special Manuel Villet, who's a dear friend of mine. So we have an international flavor here with the Vancouver rain. So this is a rainfall in my hometown, and yes, I wrote this piece. I hope you enjoy it.
You are listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. Hi, folks. Thank you for listening. That was Vancouver Rain. It was played on this recording by Graham Thulis. And the next piece, which is actually two pieces played together as a unit, are Fugues 1 and 2. These fugues are written in a slightly pre bachian style, and Graham Thulis, I've been very blessed, has played these pieces and Vancouver Rain in many different places, mostly all over London, I think, and has recorded them numerous times as well. Graham's a brilliant piano player, studied at the Royal College of Music, and I've been thrilled and privileged to work with him. So moving from the free impressionist style of Vancouver Rain, we now have two pieces which are fairly short, and definitely sound fugue-like. Listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. For now, moving away from music that is impressionist and fugal, 
echoing back to the Baroque, even if it's written by someone living now, to what we would call experimental music, perhaps, or music that's designed around a theme where you get together and extemporize, and whatever happens, happens. I have a wonderful friend, John Boswell Maver, who is a gifted composer and pianist, has performed all over the world, originally from Australia. And we used to work together in a particular studio, and during our breaks, we used to perform together and play together and record the things we did. One such piece is this one called The Decline and Fall of Salome. And as those of you who may know the story in the Bible, this is the girl who danced before Herod, and her mother requested the head of John the Baptist. So this is not a pretty story. We have in this piece a flute, which would be me, and the piano, which is John Boswell Maver. We also have a scream and a little bit of singing into the keyboard. The piano is prepared. So open your ears and experience the music. Thank you. 
Hi, folks. We're now moving back into a different type of spiritual expression. Whereas the last piece was telling a story, an unhappy event of the beheading of John the Baptist and the dancing to get Herod to do this, the manipulation of that, the next piece is reflective. It's flute alone. It's recorded at Covenant Garden, and it's Steal Away. This is a spiritual for North America. I always loved it. I wrote this arrangement for flute, and by the way, I'm playing the flute in this recording, for myself to play at church services in Canada. And I started doing it at concerts in Canada in around 2001, and I've been doing it ever since. It's a beautiful reflective piece which hopefully will make you look inside and maybe say a prayer and think about things in a new light. It's gorgeous. I hope you enjoy it. One of my favorites. Continuing on with the reflective, meditative approach of Steal Away is His Eye is on the Sparrow. This is a piece of music I wish would regain popularity because I love it so much. It used to be sung in churches many years ago when I was a wee youngster. I always loved the melody and I loved the thoughts behind it, which is that God watches over all of us. And I think this is true and I think it's a beautiful thought, which I try to take with me as I journey through life. This is, again, something reflective and beautiful. It's supposed to depict the sparrow, as you'll hear in the trills of the flute. It's from the same concert at Covenant Garden as the previous piece of music, and I hope you enjoy it. If you know this piece, I hope you can sing along to part of it.
Are listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlow FM 97.5. I'm glad that you're spending your afternoon with us. The next piece is, I think, the only piece on this program today that I didn't either write or arrange. And I put it in because I really love it. It's called Summertime. It's by George Gershwin. <laughs> and I just couldn't resist. I recorded this a number of years ago with Gareth George on piano. And similar to John Boswell Maver, Gareth and I worked together for many years and have stayed very close friends. We used to spend the time we were not working recording jazz. And one afternoon we recorded this piece, and it's Summertime by George Gershwin. I hope you like it.
we're moving from the wonderful, melodious world of George Gershwin to a sometimes melodious but intense and rhythmical and tough war and heartbreak. This is a piece of music I wrote over a period of two years for flute and piano. I wrote it after watching the evening news one night, and it was after peace talks in the Middle East, once again fighting had broken out, and I couldn't stand it anymore. And my way of expressing my deep disappointment in the human race was to write this piece. The idea I had when I wrote the piece was to have the flute and the piano together for most of the piece, and the flute drops out, and the piano finishes alone, and this is to symbolize that the flute player has in effect died. I'm trying to make a comment about war by saying this, so the piano player finishes alone. It is slightly reminiscent of an ostinatic rhythmic bottom line throughout large sections of the work. I do hope you like it. I hope you listen with an open heart, open ears, and open mind, and just experience the story of the music. It was dedicated to Ben Pinnow, who has worked with me for many years and who's a brilliant, brilliant piano player. I'm very pleased that this recording is, is him and I playing this piece together.
You are listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. We're now moving from war and heartbreak and disappointment in life to a very beautiful visual image, if you will, of London in the afternoon. This piece of music is written by Gareth George and I, largely because we always met up on Saturday afternoons to record and play music together. We still do. And this piece came out of those visits and recordings and practice sessions. It's relaxed. It's describing old London, if you can imagine, from many years ago. And I hope you like it. It's a little bit quasi-jazz, but not really. It's free form. It's very relaxing, and I hope you like it.
Hi there, folks. Our next piece is called Fantasia and Rishikari. This piece has three sections, is written for organ, and the first and third sections are similar, but definitely not identical to each other. They are a free form and very exotic sounding, I think. The middle section is called a Rishikari, and that's literally what it is. That's the form of the middle section. And this form was a pre-fugal form. In other words, about 100 years before Bach really developed the fugue, this is what types of contrapuntal uh, music was being written. So I used that form for the Rishikari, and then I used my own sensibilities for the Fantasia. Wilbur Hughes and I went to University of London together, both in the music program, and it's out of our time spent there together that he expressed an interest in performing this piece. It was fabulous. He went home to Australia and he gave its premier performance at St. Andrew's Cathedral in 2004, August 6. He then came back to England in 2006 and recorded a DVD of the piece at Bromley Parish Church. I'm very privileged and honored that Wilbur has continued to do this piece in his concerts, and he travels a lot, so this piece has been around the world a little bit, I think, which is wonderful. I hope you like it. It's one of my favorites of all the pieces I've written, and I don't know quite why it is, but I do like it, and I love what Wilbur's done with it, so enjoy.
are listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. While we're thinking about organs, let's think about church music. For example, the next piece is a Sanctus and a Benedictus, which is part of the liturgy. In this recording, Keith Long is singing it at All Hallows by the Tower. He has sung in the BBC Symphony Chorus. He sings regularly at All Saints Kingston Church and with the Twickenham Choral Society and Vasari Singers and has done a number of recordings with Vasari as well as many, many concerts. I was very thrilled that he wanted to do this piece. It is a liturgical piece, but has never, in my knowledge, been used in a liturgical fashion. It has been sung and recorded by Keith Long and Alison Wheeler, and they've both done absolutely fabulously. This is Keith Long at All Hallows, and it is a sanctus. It's very tonal. It's four-part harmony. I hope you like it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is the Lord's Prayer, very familiar to most of us. I put this to music in 1999, approximately. I didn't write down the exact date, but I know it was in 1999 because it was that year that I was commissioned to write a choir piece with these words for McGee Secondary School in Vancouver, Canada. While I was writing the piece, I decided to also write it for soloist with organ or piano accompaniment. And here again, we have Keith Long singing Our Father Who Art in Heaven at All Hallows Tower.
A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year. For such a journey, and such a journey, the ways deep and the weather sharp in the very dead of winter. The next piece of music, which is very short, is called The Winter's Tale. It's for flute alone and uses a few extended creative techniques. And the idea behind this short piece was simply to express what winter felt like. I am a huge fan of T.S. Eliot, who wrote The Journey of the Magi, which I just quoted. There are many winter's tales, and we each have one. And I guess for me, this short piece of music expressed my winter's journey one year. listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. We move on the winter's journey now back into the world of liturgy. And the next piece is called Kyrie. This is not a traditional liturgy in that I wrote it for flute and voice and piano. And it's the way it's written be hard to sing in church. I wrote the melody for the singer a very long time ago and threw it in a drawer and forgot about it for a number of years. And then I started thinking this would work really well if it were a Kyrie. So about a year and a half ago, I wrote this piece. Two people expressed a real interest in recording it and performing it, and they did so at St. Peter's Church, West Molesley, and at All Hallows by the Tower. And this is the recording from the performance at All Hallows by the Tower. I hope you enjoy it.
Our next piece is Deep River, a spiritual, which I arranged again for flute and voice and piano. The musicians on this recording are Alison Wheeler, who studied at Trinity College, and Julian Callos, who studied at Oxford. I was very thrilled that these two gifted musicians recorded this piece and performed it a couple of times as well. They also put out their own CD, which is connected with St. Peter's Church West Molesley, which has been sold to raise funds for the local charity. The Deep River is a little bit jazz-influenced, and I hope you like jazz, because I love it. And if you think about the reflection of the idea of passing over Jordan, this is what this piece captures, the Deep South, at least I hope so, being the arranger. Enjoy. are listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. We're continuing on with 
a jazz feel and a new music feel and an improvisational, extemporational feel. The next piece is called Anarja, spelt A-N-A-R-J-A. And the question might arise, what does this mean? It's actually a word I made up. I made it up from two words. It's a cross between the word anarchy and the word jazz. So we have anarja. And I'm hoping that that concept comes through in this recording, again by John Boswell Maver on piano and me on flute. And if you can imagine new music combined with some jazz fusion overtones, I think you have this one. So open your ears, your heart, your mind, your soul, and experience energy.
I love London, never want to leave it. And neither does Gareth George, the piano player for this particular piece of music. But together we wrote this piece with this imagining what if we left and couldn't come back. This is very much jazz-flavored, free-form, and contemplative. Hope you like it, and I hope that your journey is a wonderful one. Leaving London... We've come to the end of our journey, and here is the final track. I'm a huge fan of Miles Davis, and so is my friend Gareth George, and we often improvise over melodies and themes that Miles Davis presented us with during his wonderful, incredible career. And we came up with some new ideas about the famous piece recorded on Blue Note label called So What? So Gareth and I call this piece Our Comments on So What?
are listening to Choice Classics with Colleen Muriel on Marlowe FM 97.5. Thank you. 